and the most distinct pleasures of my job is the duty that I perform today, awarding our nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. This medal is given to those who have risen to pinnacles of achievement in their fields. It's a recognition of their accomplishments, hard work, and dedication for America and for humanity. The recipients of this award have touched all our lives with their contributions, strengthening the fabric of our society and improving the quality of our life. The men and women that we honor today come from across our land. Some children of immigrants, some immigrants themselves, many from humble beginnings. But they all share a quality that Carl Sandburg once summed up so well when he wrote, man is born with rainbows in his heart. And these men and women never lost sight of them, living out their dreams in their adult lives. We call their award the Medal of Freedom because only in a free society such as ours do we have the opportunity to climb as high and go as far as our dreams, talent, and energy will take us. I'm reminded of a scene that took place in Washington the first summer that I was here as president. It was evening on Memorial Day, and the National Symphony was giving the traditional free concert on the west lawn of the Capitol. As a backdrop, the Capitol dome was lighted and stood out dramatically against the clear night with our the night sky with our flag waving over it. And Maxim Shostakovich was conducting his first concert since leaving the Soviet Union. And after a standing ovation from the audience, Shostakovich spoke quietly and with measured eloquence. Today, he said, for you and me is a great day. For you, it is a great national day. And for me, I'm happy twice to play for you and to be free. Well, I know the 12 men and women we're about to honor understand how Shostakovich felt. With their talent and with our, the freedom of our way, the life that has given them to use it. By working and living among us, they've broadened and enriched freedom for us all. We're proud and grateful they're Americans. Now let me read the citation, and I will present the medal to each one. George Balanchine. Accepting the medal for Mr. Balanchine is Suzanne Farrell, principal dancer of the New York City Ballet and his student. The citation, the genius of George Balanchine has enriched the lives of all Americans who love the dance. Since he arrived in America as a young man in 1933, he has entertained and inspired millions with his stage and film choreography. Major among his greatest contributions as a ballet master are the founding of the first American classical ballet company, the great New York City Ballet, and the School of American Ballet. Throughout his career, Mr. Balanchine has entertained, captivated, and amazed our diverse population, lifting our spirits and broadening our horizons through his talent and art. And there, and you will later receive the citation also that accompanies this. Thank you very much for being here. And the next is a posthumous award to Paul W. Bryant. And Bear Bryant's granddaughter, Mary Harmon Tyson, will accept the medal on behalf of her family. Bear Bryant, in many ways, perhaps I should say first, American sports embody the best in our national character, dedication, teamwork, honor, and friendship. And Paul Bear Bryant embodied something so American, football. The winner of more games than any other coach in history, Bear Bryant was a true American hero, a hard but beloved taskmaster. He pushed ordinary people to perform extraordinary feats. Patriotic to the core, devoted to his players, and inspired by a winning spirit that never quit, Bear Bryant gave his country the gift of a legend. In making the impossible seem easy, he lived what we all strive to be.
receive the citation. James Burnham. As a scholar, writer, historian, and philosopher, James Burnham has profoundly affected the way America views itself and the world. Since the 1930s, Mr. Burnham has shaped the thinking of world leaders. His observations have changed society, and his writings have become guiding lights in mankind's quest for truth. Freedom, reason, and decency have had few greater champions in this century than James Burnham. And I owe him a personal debt because throughout the years traveling the mashed potato circuit, I have quoted you widely. <laughs> Dr. James Cheek. As the president of one of our country's greatest institutions of higher education, and as an outstanding black American scholar, James Cheek embodies the spirit of excellence in education. Dr. Cheek's distinguished career and community work are impressive testimony to his commitment to his calling and his country. His efforts have helped to build a better life for black Americans and a better country for us all. R. Buckminster Fuller. A true Renaissance man and one of the greatest minds of our times, Richard Buckminster Fuller has made contributions as a geometrician, educator, and architect designer that are benchmarks of accomplishment in their fields. Among his most notable inventions and discoveries are synergetic geometry, geodesic structures, and tensegrity structures. Mr. Fuller reminds us all that America is a land of pioneers, haven for innovative thinking, and the free expression of ideas. Reverend Billy Graham. <clears throat> Reverend William Billy Graham's untiring evangelism has spread the word of God to every corner of the globe and made him one of the most inspirational spiritual leaders of the 20th century. As a deeply committed Christian, his challenge to accept Jesus Christ has lifted the hearts, assuaged the sorrows, and renewed the hopes of millions. Billy Graham is an American who lives first and always for his fellow citizens. In honoring him, we give thanks for God's greatest spiritual gifts, faith, hope, and love. And Billy, I'm going to have to tell them something that you told me, because with all of this, too, there is, there is a practical side of life. Reverend Graham was in the Soviet Union and invited by a bureaucrat of that governmental structure to lunch and found himself faced with a lunch as he described it was more magnificent and more of a gourmet type of thing than he had ever seen. Caviar that wouldn't stop and every other thing that you could eat. And he couldn't resist saying to this host, but how can you live this way, do this, when there are so many people out there in your country that don't have enough to eat, that are hungry? And the man said, I worked hard for this. <laughs> And God bless him, Billy Graham said, that's what the capitalists say. <laughs>
Lily Osborne will accept the medal on behalf of Eric Hoffer. Harry Coffer, the son of immigrant parents, is an example of both the opportunity and the, vi the vitality of the American way of life. After overcoming his loss of sight as a child, Eric Hoffer educated himself in our public libraries. As an adult, he has relished hard work and believed in its dignity, spending 23 years in jobs ranging from lumberjack to dock worker. As America's longshoreman philosopher, his books on philosophy have become classics. Mr. Hoffer's spirit, self-reliance, and great accomplishments remind us all that the United States remains a land where each of us is free to achieve the best that lies within us. I only had one opportunity, but I shall treasure the day that, as governor of California, I was able to have him come over to my office and I got some pretty good sound and salty advice. <laughs> Claire Booth Luce. Claire? <clears throat> Novelist, playwright, politician, diplomat, and advisor to presidents. Claire Booth Luce has served and enriched her country in many fields. Her brilliance of mind, gracious warmth, and great fortitude have propelled her to exceptional heights of accomplishment. As a congresswoman, ambassador, and member of the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, Claire Booth Luce has been a persistent and effective advocate of freedom, both at home and abroad. She has earned the respect of people from all over the world and the love of her fellow Americans. Dr. Dumas Malone, and the medal will be accepted by his son, Gifford Malone. As one of the foremost historians, authors, and scholars of this century, Dumas Malone has recounted the birth of an, our nation and the ideals of our founding fathers. Among Dr. Malone's most notable accomplishments is his biography of Thomas Jefferson, now regarded as the most authoritative work of its kind. Dr. Malone's contribution to our national lore will remain invaluable to succeeding generations as each takes up responsibility for the heritage of freedom so eloquently described in his articles and books. Mabel Mercer. And the citation, Mabel Mercer has been called a living testament to the artfulness of the American song and a legend if there ever was one. Her talent, her elegance, and her unique way with a lyric have gathered a devoted following all over the world. Her special style has influenced some of America's most famous performers earning her the reputation of a singer's singer. Ms. Mercer's career has spanned more than 60 years, and she continues to delight audiences and critics alike. With her incomparable talent, she has helped shape and enrich America's music. Simon Ramo. As an engineer, businessman, physicist, and defense and aerospace pioneer, Simon Ramo's career has been in the forefront of American technology development and growth. The son of a storekeeper 
In Salt Lake City, Dr. Ramo built his business from a one-room office to a nationwide network of production plants. A shining symbol of American ingenuity and innovativeness, Dr. Ramo was also a distinguished author, philanthropist, and civic leader. His life's work has strengthened America's freedom and protected our peace. And in addition, while I was governor once, he wrote a speech for me to give it a very distinguished educational gathering that quieted all charges that I was not of an intellectual capacity. <laughs> Jacob K. Javits. In an outstanding public career of nearly 34 years, Jacob Javits has distinguished himself as a New York State Attorney General, United States Representative, and United States Senator. He has ably represented the people of New York in the Congress and all Americans to the world. With leadership and wisdom, he has guided America through historic turning points, striving always for justice at home and peace in the world. And Well, that concludes the presentations. By the achievements of their lifetimes and by their presence here today in person or in spirit, each recipient has brought honor to the White House. And I thank you for being our guest today. God bless you all. God bless all of you.